Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Else Alchemy. In this video, we are gonna look at how to prepare Kerala style fish curry. You can have this curry with flatbreads, rice, roti, chapatis. The distinct flavor comes through from an ingredient called kodambuli. This is a type of tamarind. Garcinia indica is a plant in the mangosteen family. It's commonly called as cocoon. HCA called hydroxycitric acid is deemed to have weight loss capacities. Let's jump into the video for preparing this now. I take about half a cup of shallots, I remove the outer layer or the skin and wash them thoroughly before incorporating this in the curry. Once the shallots have been finely chopped, I move on to the garlic. The garlic skin is taken out. I take about four pods of garlic here and a slice of ginger. Now the quantity for the garlic and the ginger should be equal. So it's time to clean the ginger now. I finely chop the garlic and the ginger. Now let's review the ingredients needed for this curry. I've taken about 1 kg of boneless tilapia fish here. You could use any type of fish like shark or kingfish or halibut or anything as long as they are boneless. The reason behind this is because the flavor from the cocoon or kodambuli would get absorbed by this fish. So which is why boneless fish is preferred in this recipe. We have here about half a cup of finely chopped shallots. Remember to chop them finely. We then have the ginger, the garlic and two green chilies. For a kilogram of fish, this quantity of ginger and garlic is enough. Now you could change the ratios depending upon the amount of fish being used. The spices needed for this recipe are half a tablespoon of fenugreek seeds, half a tablespoon of turmeric, one and a half tablespoon of chili powder. We then need one and a half tablespoon of salt and three tablespoons of coconut oil. You could use any type of oil that you have but it's best suited to use coconut oil as that's what's predominantly used in Carolyn cuisine. We then have the hero of this dish which is the kadambuli or the kuku. We then have the curry leaves which is going to add the extra flavor to our dish. To get maximum flavor for this dish, we are gonna boil this kokum or kodambuli in about two cups of water. Now, this is a pretty much big glass, so but it comes about two cups. If you do not have kokum or kodambuli, you could use tomatoes in this recipe and you could still have this delicious curry. I have used about four to five pots of kodambuli here. To the two cups of boiling water, I add in all the kodambuli and wait for the kodambuli to release this flavor. I took about two minutes to cook them and collect it in a bowl. Over a hot pan, I pour in the coconut oil and wait for the oil to heat up so that I can then use the rest of the spices. Once the oil is hot, it's time to put in a half a tablespoon of fenugreek seeds. Take care to put the flame in a medium because at a high flame these seeds will burn and give out a bitter taste in your curry. We next add in the ginger and saute it well. Once 
We saute this ginger for about a minute. Doing this will remove the raw smell. We then add in the chopped garlic and saute this garlic for about a minute. We do not put the ginger and the garlic together because ginger takes quite some time to cook. I then add in the two green chilies. I just break them in my fingers and just add it. You could even slice them. Anything is okay here. Now we add in the shallots and we wait for the shallots to turn light pink and keep sorting them until you get that color. Now is the time that we're going to put these curry leaves which is going to give an extra punch to this dish. Keep sorting them until these leaves are roasted. we add half a tablespoon of turmeric powder and one and a half tablespoon of chili powder now the chili powder that I use is a combination of Kashmiri chili powder and a normal red chili powder if you just have the normal one it's fine you can still use this in this recipe keep sorting them and remember to keep the flame in medium so that we don't burn these powders out Cook these masalas for about 2 minutes. Saute them until these masalas give out a good aroma. I add in some water. This water is going to prevent uh, the burning of the masalas. Once you start seeing the boiling, it's time to add in the cocoa water. Let's add in one and a half tablespoon of salt. Now I have not added salt in my fish and that's the reason that I'm adding this much amount in this gravy. Once the salt is added, mix them well because we would not be using the ladle once the fish is dropped in for cooking. You will start to see that this gravy keeps boiling and this is the point we will drop in the fish for cooking. Now because these are boneless fish, I would not be using the ladle as they tend to break. Once the fish has all been submerged in this curry or gravy, we will cook this for about 10 minutes at a low or medium flame. After 10 minutes, we just swirl the pan and not use the ladder here. And you can see that the gravy has uh, thickened, right? Because there's a lot of flavor coming out from our fish. It's now time to taste our dish. If you find there's a you know need for salt, now is the time to add it. Don't use the ladle, just swirl the pan. We have our delicious Kerala style fish curry all ready. You could have them immediately with this hot rice or you could just keep them for a day because it tastes better as it gets a day older. So I hope you enjoy this recipe and please give me feedback on how it went. Remember to like the video and subscribe for more interesting recipes.